Hi, in today's video, we'll be discussing what is infarction. I am Dr. Zubair. I am Associate Professor in Department of Pathology. So, infarction. An infarct is an area of ischemic necrosis caused by inadequate arterial supply or venous drainage to a particular tissue. Let us look at this definition more closely. An infarct is an area of ischemic necrosis. When we refer to ischemia, it means lack of oxygen supply. Necrosis, when we use the word necrosis, it means it's a form of cell death. So, essentially infarction is an area of cell death caused by deprivation of oxygen due to inadequate arterial supply or venous drainage in a particular tissue. What are the types of infarct? So, infarcts can be classified based on the color and on the presence or absence of microbial infections. Now, based on the color, infarcts are noted to be red infarct, also called hemorrhagic infarcts. And these are seen in when there is venous occlusion in organs which have, which are usually loose like ovaries, testes, lungs. White or anemic infarcts are seen in solid organs like heart, spleen and kidney. Infarcts are wedge shaped with the occluded vessel at the apex and the periphery at the base. So, especially in the solid organs, these are wedge shaped infarcts. The reason is that these organs are supplied by end arteries. So, if there is an artery over here, which is branching, if there is infarct at this point, you can imagine the effect. The base will be much wider. That's why it's called a wedge shaped infarct. This is a commonly asked question in VIVA exams, in the practicals. What are the types of infarct? Infarcts are Again, classified based on the presence or absence of microbial infection as septic infarct and bland infarct. If there is the presence of microbes, it's called a septic infarct. If they are not there, it's called a bland infarct. Now, what is the sequel? How does the infarct progress? First of all, there will be ischemic coagulative necrosis with inflammatory response at the margin lasting for a few hours. And then there is a reparative response. In, at the end of it, you will have a scar tissue. So this is how a red infarct will look. This is how a white infarct will look. And the infarct will be replaced by fibrous scar as seen in this kidney. What are the factors that influence the development of infarct? First is the nature of vascular supply. Okay, If there is an organ with plenty of collateral channels, then you can imagine that the effect of infarct will not be that much. While on the other hand, an organ with end organ arterial supply like spleen, okay, there is not much of collateral vessels. So, what happens here? The effect of the infarct is much more. Rate of development of occlusion. Let's say if the ischemia is chronic and the infarct is slowly developing, it gives the body enough time to develop collateral channels. Okay, let's say a patient with uh, atherosclerosis, the lumen of the arteries is very small. Gradually it is reducing. But what happens? The collateral channels will open up and that allows the patient to lead a normal life. But on the other hand, there is another patient who was normal until now. Suddenly he develops acute MI. Why? Because of sudden obstruction by a thrombus. Okay or a rupture of atherosclerotic plaque. So that leads to sudden occlusion and sudden infarction. So if the rate of infarction is, development of the infarct is slower, there is a better chance for the tissue to survive. If the rate of development of occlusion is larger, there is immediate tissue death. All right. Third, vulnerability to hypoxia. How vulnerable is the tissue to hypoxia? Tissues such as the brain and heart 
these are vital organs and they are very vulnerable to hypoxia so in the brain if there is a hypoxia for at least a minimum of at least 30 seconds to 1 minute the tissue starts to die i mean the brain tissue will die on the other hand skeletal muscles they are very robust so even if the hypoxia is prolonged for 2 3 hours also they can still have the ability to withstand the hypoxia all right so that depends on the vulnerability of the organ to hypoxia and finally oxygen content of the blood also matters how much is the patient well oxygenated okay. how much the content of oxygen that also influences the development of an infarct all right so this brings us to the end of the video this was a very short lecture and to summarize infarcts are is an area of ischemic necrosis due to inadequate arterial supply of venous drainage caused to a tissue and infarcts can be classified based on the color as red and white infarct based on the presence of absent microbial infection as bland infarct septic infarct sometimes they are even classified as on the age as recent infarct and old infarcts and these are the factors that influence the development of infarct okay please like subscribe and share this channel thank you